Imagine a Premier League where innovation reigns supreme. Enter Roberto De Zerbi, a managerial genius who has transformed Brighton into a powerhouse. His innovative tactics have not only caught the eyes of legendary managers like Pep Guardiola, Mikel Arteta, and Jurgen Klopp, but have also set a new standard for excellence. In this video, we delve deep into the astonishing details of De Zerbi's coaching style that has the entire football world buzzing. From dominating games to the anticipation of how rival teams will counterplay, this is a football revolution you don't want to miss. Brighton's season so far under Roberto De Zerbi has been far from boring. The team sits in 8th place in the Premier League by the time this video is recorded, and they've both scored and conceded in all domestic matches so far. They'll easily secure qualification to the knockout stages in the Europa League, which means valuable prize money for a small club like Brighton. However, it's the way De Zerbi's team plays their football that still makes neutrals admire them. The Seagulls have had an average of 60% possession, both home and away in the Premier League so far this season. And that's not a coincidence. Roberto De Zerbi has for years been a positional style manager, with an extreme approach, in clubs like Sassuolo and Shakhtar. And why do we call his approach extreme? We've seen his players walk slowly or standing with their studs on the ball, waiting for the opponent to press them. He has also had interesting positional choices, like playing without a striker and using two or three players central between the lines. In other words, not something you see in English football every day. Before De Zerbi came to England, his Shakhtar team shocked teams like Real Madrid in the Champions League with the narrow 2-3 build-up structure. With short passes, usage of the third man, they lured out opponents to press them, only to create favourable one against one situations on the wings. This tactic did put players like Mikhailo Mudrik in situations where he could use his extreme pace and dribbling skills. Just look at those distances and how patient De Zerbi's team passed the ball to move opponents before exploding with pace and with 3-4 players arriving in the box for cross-ins. Against other defensive structures, like 5-3-2 in this example, the fullback stayed a little bit wider making it possible for the number 10s to drop down and combine with the holding midfielder, who became the third man. Also, this adjustment forced the midfield trio of the opposition to stay narrow, making the full-backs better options when they are the free player. You could say that the way De Zerbi's team attacked against this defensive structure makes it almost impossible to defend, especially when using third-man combinations so effectively. With the holding midfielder dictating the play as Shakhtar did, it's tempting to mark him tightly. The problem with this approach, however, is that the passing lane between the centre-backs and the striker or number 10s which is left open. Also, the holding midfielder can just move his marker away from the most dangerous area and open new passing lanes. De Zerbi took the same principles into the Premier League when he got hired at Brighton. Even though the build-up structure differed a bit, the style remained the same. In De Zerbi's first match away at Anfield, Brighton lined up in a 3-2-5 against Liverpool's narrow 4-3-3 press. De Zerbi's rare use of short passes, to and between the double pivots, Caicedo and Mac Allister lured Liverpool's front line to press the back three when in possession. Also, Thiago and Henderson followed up to mark the pivots, giving Brighton this opportunity. Here you see the line from Dunk to Trossard and Gross open up, without Fabinho being able to track both, effectively creating a 2v1 in space in front of Liverpool's back four. Also, March and Estupin pinned the full backs, so that Fabinho had to cover all that distance by himself. Liverpool couldn't figure out how to press, without exposing Brighton's number 10s as the free player. The game ended 3-3, but with more clinical finishing, the Seagulls could have buried the game before half-time. After coaching for a while in England, and bringing Brighton into European competition, De Zerbi has used the 4-2-4 structure the most. Some may call it the 4-box, 4 explaining the midfield box with two number six and two number tens. It did look something like this. Traditionally, positional teams did not use two centre-backs and two holding midfielders at the same time, due to the opponent's possibility to force the play out wide early in the build-up. However, the way Brighton lures out the first line of pressure makes the space wide enough for the pivots to receive or combine when the ball is played to them. One of them is usually open to receive, but not free to turn. The other one is usually not open to be played, but free to proceed forward if he receives the ball as a third man. With both number 10s dropping down in the pockets between the opponent's midfield and defence, 
the threat of runs in behind the last line is up to Brighton's wingers. Under De Zerbi, that is non-negotiable. Here you see that the wingers get more and more responsibility in running behind the opponent's defence after De Zerbi arrived. Players like Matoma and Solly March have heavily benefited from this approach. March had for years struggled with goal contributions after Brighton's promotion to the Premier League. But under De Zerbi, the winger has finally started to reach his potential, and the stats back it up. Although the wingers are essential for De Zerbi, much of the foundation for their chance creation is made before they even get involved. As already mentioned, the key is to lure out the opposition to press the ball carrier so that the spaces between the lines get bigger. However, the details in what's required to succeed with this tactic depends on all 11 players if we are to believe Adam Lalana, In an interview with Graham Hunter, he stated, the key is to find the spare man. The way De Zerbi works and his ideas, I don't think there's anyone else working like him in football. It can look risky, and if you have one player not in sync, you're playing with fire. If you're not giving the right option when the ball carrier needs you, you're leaving your mate in trouble. We are waiting for pressure. Sometimes we're getting pressed by five or six players. So you need to give the centre-halves the right option at the right time. Teams have started pressing in other ways, but it's still tempting to jump press the centre-backs, as Rashford and Fernandes tried in this video. Brighton usually finds the solution to get out. The Seagulls practice these details a lot, to make sure they get it right. At first, teams pressed them constantly. It made most build-up plays look like counter-attacks, because Brighton managed to break the pressure with passes and attack 3v3 or 4v4 on half a pitch. All in this way, so it depends how you attack, tell me how you're going to defend me, and after I'm going to tell you how we're going to attack. And it's a team like plays so slow, and after they're so quick, like a counter-attack. Even though Brighton yet again had to sell a lot of their best players last summer, like Moises Caicedo, Alexis McAllister and Leandro Trossard before that, De Zerbi continues to develop players at England's south coast. It will be interesting to see how far he can take them both in the Premier League and in Europe. What do you think of De Zerbi's style? Not only did Pep Guardiola and Mikel Arteta copy some of his ideas, he even proved Johan Cruyff himself wrong. Have a great day and don't forget to show some love by smashing that like button and hitting subscribe.